I was asked over the phone late one night whether I'd like to become part of a team working with archaeologists, musicians, musicologists and so on. So it dawned on me that this was going to be really one of the first reconstructions of a very ancient instrument. They gave me references of, for instance, a Gunderstrup bow. The images were so strong, but for it to then move from visual to oral was very, very exciting. Starting to make it, the, the head, the main head was the first, so we, we made up this large tube and, and there were sections of that running along. It just wasn't just one long piece. There was the snout element and then there was the head with the eyes into it and then there was a part at the back of that, another tube which fitted against it. And the tubes coming together all had a flange running around them so that when they butted together you could put rivets through. The way that I have worked it is that I, I make the head as a circular, large circular tube and then I need to work from the inside out. I need to stretch the parts that are going to be in relief. I was getting a feel for how the craftsman 2000 and so years ago would have gone about making it. The back of the head is like a shallow dish and that would be worked in the same way by sinking and stretching the metal but also what we call raising, that is around the, the edge of the metal we would actually compress with, with mallets to actually make it a little bit deeper, this, this dish. So the, the, that's a very typical silversmithing technique technique of raising. We've done two things really in making mouthpieces. We've uh, made a mouthpiece by casting, by melting the metal and pouring it into a mold. And we've also taken solid bar of bronze, put it into a lathe and cut away the shape uh, to create the mouthpiece you're following in their footsteps and you're using your skills which are absolutely identical to what they would have used in those days to make such a supreme object.